Did you know that in the USA, about 50% of the population falls into the middle class, while in Europe, a whopping 62% belong to the middle income group? So, why are there so many middle income people in the most developed countries? Well, that's because most people are doing the same mistakes again and again, and that's why they are caught in the middle class trap, which keeps many from ascending to the upper middle class, or even the upper echelons of society. Ever heard of the phrase, penny wise, pound foolish? Well, it's not just about being careful with money, it's about being smart. And most people simply didn't understand that. Many middle class find themselves in a standstill. Why? Because they look around for inspiration and end up emulating their middle class peers. Unfortunately, these peers are often themselves caught in the notorious middle class cycle. This cycle is a trap of financial behaviors and decisions that hinder further progress. This is precisely where the story of Alan Jerry becomes a testament to breaking free from the middle class mold. It's a clear demonstration of how thinking differently, taking risks, and making smart investments can catapult you out of the middle class trap. Alan Jerry, the son of Russian immigrants, dropped out of high school to join the Marines. After his military service, he founded a small television repair business with skills learned from the GI Bill. But here's where his story takes a remarkable turn. In 1956, with just $1,500 earned from his business, he founded a cable company. This venture, fueled by vision and determination, evolved into Cablevision. In 1996, Cablevision was sold to Time Warner for an estimated $2.7 billion. Getting back to the topic, the newly minted middle-class individuals seeking to fit in or follow what they perceive as successful middle-class norms unknowingly adopt these same limiting habits. The result? They find themselves stuck, unable to break into the upper class, remaining in the middle class for the rest of their lives. Now, if you're aiming to break free from this trap and envision yourself in a higher class in the next five to 10 years, then this video is tailored for you. We're going to help you understand and navigate towards greater financial heights by exploring 10 critical mistakes that make you a poor middle class in which no bank can save you. So, subscribe to the channel and let's get started. The first mistake that makes you a poor middle class is not mastering the essential rule of earn, save, and invest. This mistake is a common pitfall that keeps many in the middle class from advancing financially. The middle class dilemma often revolves around a cycle of earning and spending, where hard-earned money goes out as quickly as it comes in. It's like being on a financial merry-go-round, lots of movement, but no progress. The key misstep, not saving and investing a portion of your income. It's like going grocery shopping when you're starving. Everything looks tempting, and you end up buying more than you need. Similarly, middle-class spending habits often involve purchasing things you don't need, with money you worked hard to earn, to impress people you don't even like. To understand this mistake that makes you a poor middle class in which no bank can save you, let's take an example story of two different individuals. Emily, a teacher, earns a modest income but saves 20% of her earnings every month. She invests in a diversified portfolio and lets her money grow. Contrast this with John, a sales manager with a higher income who spends his entire paycheck on luxury cars and high-end gadgets. Over time, Emily's investments compound and she achieves financial independence while John struggles with mounting debts. In the same way, imagine two characters, Maya and Ethan. Maya is a savvy saver who invests in stocks and bonds. Ethan, on the other hand, spends his salary on the latest tech and trendy clothes. After a decade, Maya's portfolio allows her to travel and pursue hobbies, while Ethan is still working overtime to pay off his credit card bills. You see, saving is not just about putting money aside. It's about creating a buffer against life's uncertainties and building a foundation for future investments. It's like constructing a dam in a river. Without it, the water, your money, flows away unchecked. But with it, you harness the flow and create a reservoir of financial resources. Unfortunately, Bankrate's emergency fund report says that only 43% of people in the USA could pay for a $1,000 emergency expense from their savings. Next, investing is where the real magic of wealth creation happens. It's about making your money work for you. Think of it as hiring a team of hardworking employees, your dollars, who work tirelessly to earn more money for you. You can consider your financial journey as a road trip. 
Earning is like fueling up your car. Saving is planning your route. And investing is hitting the accelerator towards your destination. Without all three, you might end up just driving around in circles. As Robert Kiyosaki, author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, states, the rich invest their money and spend what is left. The poor spend their money and invest what is left. This underscores the importance of reversing the spend-first mindset prevalent in the middle class. So, mistake number one. That make you a poor middle class is neglecting the earn, save, and invest rule. By learning from this mistake, you can set yourself on a path to financial security and growth, escaping the middle class trap where no bank can save you. Moving forward to the next mistake that makes you a poor middle class is no insurance and less focus on health. This oversight is a significant factor that hinders many in the middle class from achieving financial stability and growth. The middle class journey is often fraught with financial challenges, but not having insurance and neglecting health can be likened to sailing a ship without lifeboats and ignoring the leaks. It's a risky venture that can capsize your financial boat when storms hit. Insurance acts as a financial safety net, protecting you from unexpected expenses that can derail your budget and savings plans. Similarly, good health is a cornerstone of financial stability. Neglecting it can lead to high medical bills and lost income due to illness, rapidly depleting your hard-earned savings. To illustrate this, let's look at a fictional scenario involving two friends, Anna and Michael. Anna, mindful of her health, regularly invests in health insurance and maintains a healthy lifestyle. Michael, on the other hand, views insurance as an unnecessary expense and rarely pays attention to his health. One day, Michael faces a health crisis, leading to hefty medical bills and a forced hiatus from work. Without insurance or savings, he finds himself in a financial quagmire. Anna, with her insurance coverage and health savings, navigates through her health challenges without the added stress of financial ruin. This scenario is not far from reality. According to a report from the Kaiser Family Foundation, medical debt is a common issue in the United States, with many people struggling to pay off large medical bills. It underscores the importance of health insurance in safeguarding against such financial burdens. Maintaining your health is equally crucial. It's like keeping your car in top condition. Regular maintenance may cost you, but it prevents more significant expenses down the road. A study by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, reveals that regular exercise and a balanced diet can significantly reduce the risk of chronic diseases, which are not only detrimental to your health, but can also be financially draining. Warren Buffett, one of the world's most successful investors, once said, it takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. If you think about that, you'll do things differently. Applying this to our health and financial decisions, it becomes clear that preventive measures in health and insurance are not just choices, but necessities. So next mistake. That makes you a poor middle class in which no bank can save you is neglecting insurance and health. These are not mere options, but essential components of a sound financial strategy. By prioritizing your health and ensuring adequate insurance coverage, you fortify your financial future against unforeseen events and maintain a trajectory towards financial growth and stability. Continuing our journey to the next mistake is about over-reliance on loans and credit cards. This mistake is particularly misleading as it targets a vulnerability common in the middle-class mindset. Loans and credit cards are like double-edged swords. They offer the allure of immediate gratification, the ability to purchase what you want, when you want. However, this comes at a cost, often ensnaring middle-class individuals in a web of debt. Credit card companies and lenders are aware that the middle class is more prone to spending, making them prime targets for loan offers and credit lines. The trap is set with the promise of fulfilling dreams now rather than later. It's like being offered a shortcut on a long journey. The shortcut seems appealing, but it can lead you through treacherous terrain that ultimately slows you down. For the middle class, this shortcut is often filled with high interest rates and hidden fees, leading to a cycle of debt that's hard to escape. To understand this mistake that makes you a poor middle class in which no bank can save you, let's take the story of Rachel and Steve, two middle class individuals with similar incomes. Rachel avoids loans and credit cards, preferring to save for big purchases. Steve, 
enticed by easy credit, racks up considerable debt, buying the latest gadgets and a new car. While Rachel builds her savings, Steve struggles with mounting interest and monthly payments, hindering his financial progress. You see, using credit cards for everything is like using a Band-Aid for every ailment. It might cover the problem temporarily, but it won't prevent a financial injury from getting worse. According to a report by Experian, the average American has over $6,000 in credit card debt. This statistic highlights the widespread issue of credit reliance and its impact on the financial health of the middle class. As Dave Ramsey, a renowned financial expert, often says, debt is dumb, cash is king. This simple yet powerful statement underscores the importance of relying on your own money rather than borrowing at high costs. Thus, this mistake can keep you spinning in the middle class cycle, hindered by debt and unable to progress financially. The key is to resist the temptation of instant gratification and build a solid financial foundation based on savings and wise spending. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far and want more topics like this, comment the word more so I know. Moving forward to the next mistake that makes you a poor middle class, which focused on excessive spending on eating out. This is a common yet often overlooked aspect that can significantly impact a family's financial health in today's culture, being a foodie is often worn as a badge of honor. However, this self-proclaimed title can sometimes lead to costly habits. It's important to realize that being a food enthusiast isn't inherently an achievement, especially when it starts to hurt your wallet and health. It's like bragging about being a marathon watcher of TV shows. It might be enjoyable, but it doesn't necessarily contribute to your well-being. You see, spending too much on eating out is like buying a new outfit for every party. Sure, you'll look great, but your closet and bank account will soon start to feel the strain. Frequent dining out or ordering takeaways can put a substantial dent in your finances. It's akin to a leaky faucet in your financial house. Small but continuous drippings that can lead to a significant loss over time. Moreover, the health implications of regularly consuming outside food, such as obesity, diabetes, and high blood pressure, add another layer of concern as medical expenses related to these conditions can further strain your budget. To understand this, let's consider Emma and Liam, who are two colleagues with a love for gourmet food. Emma chooses to indulge in expensive restaurants frequently, while Liam enjoys cooking at home and treats himself to a restaurant meal occasionally. Over time, Emma's extravagant food expenses start to add up, affecting her ability to save money. In contrast, Liam's balance between home-cooked meals and occasional dining out proves financially prudent and healthier. Financial experts often emphasize the importance of budgeting and conscious spending. As Suze Orman, a personal finance guru, says, just because you can afford it doesn't mean you should buy it. This principle is particularly relevant when it comes to managing food expenses. In essence, this mistake that makes you a poor middle class, in which no bank can save you, is the unchecked spending on eating out. By balancing the joy of being a food enthusiast with the practicality of home-cooked meals, you can maintain both your financial health and physical well-being. Moving on from the importance of diversifying income sources in a household, we now address another critical issue which is about the pitfalls of overspending on education, a particularly relevant topic for middle-class families. You see, education is often lauded as the key to breaking out of poverty and climbing the social ladder, especially for middle-class families. However, there's a fine line between investing in education and overspending on it. In the USA, the cost of raising a child is estimated at a staggering $240,000 before college expenses are even factored in. When it comes to higher education, the numbers are equally daunting. From the last and present academic years, the average annual cost is around $22,690 for a public college and $51,690 for a private college, as reported by the College Board. All this is similar to walking a tightrope. On one side, there's the undeniable value of a good education, but on the other, there's the risk of being weighed down by financial burden. It's about finding the right balance, where you invest in education wisely without compromising your financial health. An integral part of this discussion is the issue of student loans. 
These loans can be a double-edged sword. They provide access to education, but can also lead to a lifetime of debt. This mistake that makes you a poor middle class in which no bank can save you is like ordering a five-course meal when you're only a little hungry. It sounds like a great idea, but you're left feeling overwhelmed and overcharged. Imagine the Anderson family, who encourage their children to attend high-priced universities, resulting in substantial student loan debt. Contrast this with the Browns, who opt for more affordable educational paths, like community colleges and public universities, or even scholarships and grants. Over time, the Browns find themselves in a more stable financial position, whereas the Andersons struggle with the burden of student loan debt. Many financial experts advise caution in educational spending. As Suze Orman, a financial advisor, often points out, it's essential to consider the return on investment when it comes to education costs. This means evaluating the potential income versus the debt incurred. Therefore, while investing in education is crucial, it should not come at the expense of financial stability. Wise decisions regarding education spending and student loans are key to avoiding this common middle class trap. The next mistake that makes you a poor middle class is the tendency to rely on oneself for everything. This habit, often rooted in the desire to save money, can paradoxically lead to a significant loss of time and potential income. In the pursuit of cutting costs, many in the middle class take on tasks themselves, from home repairs to personal finance management. While this do-it-yourself approach can save money up front, it often comes at the cost of valuable time that could be spent on more productive activities, like learning new skills or earning extra income. Trying to do everything yourself is like trying to cut your own hair. It seems like a good idea until you end up with a lopsided haircut and have to spend more fixing it. Time is a resource just as valuable as money. By spending hours on tasks that could be efficiently handled by professionals or automated systems, you might save a few dollars but lose out on opportunities to earn more. It's essential to weigh the cost of your time against the potential savings from doing things yourself. Consider two families, the Carters and the Smiths. The Carters insist on handling everything themselves to save money. They spend weekends and evenings on various tasks, from car repairs to tax filing. The Smiths, however, choose to outsource some tasks, freeing up their time to focus on side hustles and family. Over time, the Smiths not only save time, but also increase their income, while the Carters find themselves stuck in a cycle of constant work with limited financial progress. This approach is validated by time management studies, which emphasize the importance of delegating or outsourcing non-core activities to focus on high-value tasks. As Robert Kiyosaki, author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, advises, it's important to work smarter, not harder. This means recognizing when your time is better spent on activities that contribute to your financial growth, rather than trying to save every penny by doing everything yourself. Those mistakes are the ones that make you a poor middle class in which no bank can save you from trying to be a jack of all trades and master of none. The key to overcoming this mistake is recognizing the value of your time and balancing cost-saving DIY, do-it-yourself, projects with opportunities for learning and earning. Next, it's time to address mistake number eight, settling for the status quo. This mistake is particularly prevalent among middle-class individuals who, upon reaching a comfortable income level, cease to seek further financial growth. There's a common tendency to become complacent once a certain level of income is achieved. This income may be sufficient to meet basic needs and afford some luxuries, leading to a sense of contentment. However, this comfort zone can be a financial growth trap. It's like reaching a rest stop on a hike and deciding it's good enough, even though the summit is just a little further up the path. Settling for the status quo financially is like using a flip phone in the smartphone era. It works, sure, but think of all the features and opportunities you're missing out on. When individuals cease to explore ways to expand their earning potential, they limit their financial growth. It's essential to recognize that meeting current needs doesn't mean future needs or opportunities are also secured. The economic landscape is ever-changing, and what suffices today may not suffice tomorrow. To understand this mistake that makes you a poor middle class in which no bank can save you, let's consider two families, 
the Thompsons and the Greens. The Thompsons, after reaching a comfortable income, decide not to pursue any additional income streams. They are content with their current lifestyle and see no need to push for more. The Greens, however, continuously seek opportunities to increase their earnings, whether through investments, side hustles, or career advancements. Over time, the Greens not only improve their standard of living, but also build a more robust financial safety net. This mindset shift is supported by financial growth theories, which suggests that continuous improvement and adaptation are key to long-term financial success. As financial guru Grant Cardone often says, success is your duty, obligation, and responsibility. This mentality encourages continuous striving for improvement and growth rather than settling for what one already has. So, mistake number eight, that makes you a poor middle class in which no bank can save you, is becoming too comfortable with the status quo. The key to overcoming this mistake is to maintain a mindset of growth and to continuously seek opportunities to expand your financial capabilities. Next up, we will explore another critical mistake that prevents many middle-class individuals from achieving their full financial potential, which is ignoring the retirement plan. This mistake often stems from a misconception about retirement and the reliance on pensions or other traditional retirement sources. Retirement planning is more than just waiting for a pension to kick in. It's about creating a sustainable passive income that can support you when you're no longer working. Relying solely on a pension is like putting all your eggs in one basket. It's risky and might not be enough to maintain your standard of living. Planning for retirement without a diverse income plan is like going on a long road trip with just one song on your playlist. It might be fine at the start, but you're going to wish you had more variety later on. A well-rounded retirement plan involves multiple streams of passive income. This could include investments in stocks, real estate, or even starting a side business that can provide income in your later years. It's about building a financial cushion that allows you to enjoy your retirement comfortably without constant worry about money. Imagine two individuals, Gary and Linda. Gary thinks his pension will be enough for retirement and doesn't explore other investment options. Linda, on the other hand, diversifies her retirement plan with a mix of investments, including a small online business. When retirement comes, Linda enjoys a comfortable lifestyle with multiple income streams, while Gary finds his pension insufficient and struggles to make ends meet. This scenario is far from fictional. A report from the Employee Benefit Research Institute highlights that many retirees find their pension and Social Security benefits inadequate for their needs, emphasizing the importance of additional retirement planning. As personal finance expert Suze Orman says, a big part of financial freedom is having your heart and mind free from worry about the what-ifs of life. A comprehensive retirement plan is crucial in achieving this freedom and security. We arrive at mistake number 10, the belief that a higher salary is the sole key to financial freedom. This misconception is common among many who aspire to improve their financial situation. Relying solely on a higher salary for financial security is like trying to fill a bucket with a hole in it. No matter how much water or money you pour in, it will never be enough if you don't plug the leak. A high salary, while beneficial, does not automatically translate into financial freedom. The crux of the issue lies in how you manage and diversify your income, not just in its amount. Thinking a higher salary will solve all your financial problems is like assuming that owning a sports car will automatically make you a great driver. It's not just about the car, it's about how you drive it. Passive income is a critical component of financial security. It's the financial equivalent of having a garden that keeps producing fruit, whether you're actively working in it or not. This could come from investments, rental properties, royalties, or any venture that provides income without requiring your constant active involvement. In this instance, we have examples of two individuals, Olivia and Jack. Both earn high salaries, but Olivia invests a portion of her income into creating passive income streams. Jack, however, relies solely on his salary and spends most of it on immediate gratifications. Years later, Olivia enjoys financial stability and the freedom to make life choices without monetary constraints, while Jack, despite his high salary, finds himself living paycheck to paycheck. 
The reality is that a high salary doesn't guard against financial emergencies or ensure long-term wealth. A study by the Federal Reserve revealed that even high earners can live paycheck to paycheck, underscoring the need for a more holistic approach to financial planning. Robert Kiyosaki often emphasizes the wealthy focus on building assets, not just increasing income. This philosophy is key to achieving true financial freedom. So mistake number 10, that makes you a poor middle class in which no bank can save you, is the belief that a higher salary alone will lead to financial freedom. True financial independence comes from smart money management, building passive income streams, and investing in assets that grow over time. And that's all for today's video. As always, you can enjoy any audiobook for free by clicking on the link below the video. You can also find a list of suggested books and where to buy them below. The purpose of this video is to educate you on various aspects of investing and not to give you any specific investment advice. Investing involves risks and uncertainties, and you should always do your own research and consult with qualified professionals before making any financial decisions. However, past performance does not guarantee future results, and you should always consider the risk of investments before putting your money at stake. If you find this video helpful, I recommend you watch my next video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, feel free to leave your comment below. I appreciate your support, and I hope to see you in my next video.